Yeah, so it moves from line to line, and I have to have my phone camera zoomed up all the way to see it. And so we just go along like this. So Bill takes a picture, I move it one line. Bill takes another picture, I move it one line, and so on. of the turntable, and this is going to sound kind of obscure, but you have two things which are moving. So let's just say, hypothetically right now, right? So if you watch the things moving, you'll see the front is moving in one direction and the back is moving in the opposite direction, right? right? So it's, you know, in essence, it's moving like that. And so if you note that there's a kind of pixelated quality to the background, it's because essentially the squares aren't quite lining up as you're turning it, whereas in the foreground, you notice it doesn't have that same pixelated quality. So what I'm shooting here is a negative. That's exactly what the negative looks like. The horizontal dimensions correspond to the amount of what's called shift in, eight, in an eight by 10 camera. The back of the camera will move sideways. How far will it move sideways? Exactly this amount. Right, so if I'm moving from left to right, this is as far as it will move from left to right. I started using this kind of camera partly for that reason, because it had more shift than some other cameras. So some cameras would not let you take a picture that was, was big, in other words. This is what's called an 8x10 um, film holder. This is an 8x10 film holder. So I've created an insert inside the film holder to hold 5x7 film because that's as big a film as I can get to work on this contraption. So here's 5x7 film. So this would be the size of the film. Loads in in this thing I've created, which I've made out of film. Actually, the film holder is made out of film. Fits in there like that. I created lots and lots and lots of these things here. So initially I thought, why not just get um, the inserts that I use, why not just get them printed out? And the answer is, they're not precise enough, not even close to precise enough. So here is a pretty big print. I then shoot that with transparency film. So where it's white here, it would be clear in the film. That insert then goes right in front of the film. How close to the film? Probably within uh, three or four millimeters, I would guess. It goes right in front of the film. So, sticks in the back of the camera, and you'd have a hard time seeing exactly what it was that you were looking at, but you can kind of tell that there's right, something there that you're shooting your picture through. So it's kind of controlled like this, so that you know, light doesn't come in around the side. When you're shooting 375 times, you don't want light bouncing all over the place. So it's kind of at the back of a column, and it's labeled. This one says, tick tock with gap. That's how it's labeled, tick tock with gap. And each one is labeled differently. So imagine you're shooting this over and over and over again, but a little bit of light is going through these black areas. No good, right? You're gonna be sort of fogging your film or making it less sharp. So very, very black with these little clear areas which are exposed in the picture. So in essence, you could think of it this way, right? You're taking your picture every single time, you're moving just a little bit. And then by the time you get to the end, you've shot an entire sheet of film. Right? They're little test prints like this one with instructions. Instructions about what I ought to do because there's something wrong with it and I don't even know what I did. Here, right. Tone down, darker, bigger, hmm. Five points dark, hmm. Lighten, uh, saturate, something about saturation. I can't even understand what it is that I've done. But after every one of these prints comes out, I'll look at it and I'll try to figure out what's wrong with it. So in this case, this is pretty good, you know? This is not a bad print at all. It looks pretty good. So my judgment was that there was not enough variation in color on this side of his head. Great, so um, didn't I see some snakes lying around? I think that there were. Here we go, right? So here's some snakes that we printed out yesterday. So I'm just going to add one of those snakes over in this little spot there. In any given moment, right, there are lots and lots of little things that could be wrong. And even though this looks like a photograph, it's actually about 
60 different photographs, meaning just recently I decided I didn't like the color of this little area. So there's a photograph here and another one there, another one there. After I created the initial picture, I decided that I should put little dollops of paint on top of the, uh, on top of the easel. So those are little photographs that have stuck on the surface. These snakes here, there's probably 25 different photographs, meaning after I do a version, I'll decide I should add a green snake here. I should add a magenta snake over here or something along those lines. Even the face at a certain point, the face was stuck on later because I thought that the original face was too low in contrast. As far as the themes within the picture, one of the things, the Medusa is something which has been uh, lots of artists, Rubens and Caravaggio among others have, have painted it, but there is a phrase the Medusan gaze, you hear, hear it sometimes, the Medusan gaze, and people refer to it in, with reference to photography, because the Medusan gaze freezes things, right? It freezes things, people turn to stone. Of course, you know, I've always said, oh, wait a minute, it's not her gaze that turns, right? It's your gaze looking at her that turns you to stone, not her gaze looking at you that turns you to stone. You know, if you say two words about Medusa, she got a raw deal. She did. No, I mean, she's one of the villains of mythology, but her story is it's horrible. It's really awful. It's kind of like, hey, you can't blame her for being a little peeved, given up, you know, her, her backstory, if you want to call it that. So it, it's, a, it's a story which has been of tremendous in, of interest to contemporary feminists relating to a variety of issues of gender um, and identity. And so that's an additional reason for uh, for the subject of the Medusa, I create a little wig. I don't wear this to school, but uh, I wear. created this uh, to um, for the original it. photograph. Right? And this is heavy. It's is probably two pounds. I mean, it's soft. Well, so it's this great idea of having you do a performance. Uh, yeah. At the opening, which I love. Uh, with the yes, yes, it, and it does. It, it's not. It's not a looker. I think you're going to agree. It's not a looker. I'm not going to actually sport it <laughs> right now. But I did create this to for the original photograph that I worked with. Um, I created this Medusa wig. An argument that is made that I'm examining, exploring to some degree is the idea that these devices fundamentally alter perception or alter the relationship between the artist and the thing being observed or the person and subject and object, and if there's another way to phrase it. So if nothing else, there's a physical object between the seer and this thing seen. You might say that's kind of a more scientific way of looking, right? kind of observing as opposed to interacting or participating with your scene. So the idea in this particular case would be this artist is looking through a grid into a mirror that what the artist is seeing in that mirror is presumably um, upside down, right? That the image is, is reversed because that's the, uh, the image that the artist is painting. So that, that's part of it. That's part of what I'm concerned with in the picture. Uh, to some degree also, this area that's created is more or less sort of the conventional area of a traditional portrait, right? What you're seeing from roughly, what, the chest up or something like that. So it creates an additional frame within the image, I suppose. Um, and serves as a kind of counterpoint to the image which is being created by the artist, which is over here on the side, the image of the Medusa. Mm -hmm.